Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. I'm back with a new art journaling tutorial. This is a very quick and easy art journal process using Distress Oxide inks and a stamp by Art by Marlene. I am working inside my Joggles Disc Bound Art Journal, which I love of course, as I've told you before. And I am just taking the page out of my Disc Bound Journal. That way I can easily work with the oxide inks. I'm using three new Distress Oxide inks and I will list all the names and colors underneath in the description area. What I love about the Disc Bound Journal from Joggles is that I can work with it on a flat surface and not in a bulky book. That way I can apply my products much easier. I started using some blending tools and using three different colors. Two of them had like an orange tone and the other one was a yellowish tone and that helped to create a really nice soft background. All I did is just blend the colors onto the background. Once I finished blending I took a spray bottle and just slightly splattered the background to create some nice texture. The nice thing of course as you know the distressed oxide inks react to water and create a really nice distressed look to the background. Then I took a paper towel and just wiped off the excess water to create those really nice splatters that you see in the background. For the next step I took a joggle stencil and again I can't remember the names for everything but I will definitely list everything below so just look in the supply list in the description area. And I used uh, another new distressed oxide ink this is from the last release and it's a brownish tone and I just blended it through the stencil in some areas of the background. I didn't want to cover the whole background, I just wanted some areas to be covered, especially in the edges and the corners, just to make some texture and make it look cohesive. I really love how the inks go on top of each other and create beautiful texture. I took this stamp from Art by Marlene, it's a little toucan and I stamped it using my Tim Holtz stamp platform on a piece of white cardstock. I used some archival ink. This color is called Thistle by Wendy Vecchi and it's a beautiful wine color, burgundy color ink and all I did is just stamp it to the background. I did this twice to create a really good impression. Then I took three more colors of Distress Oxide inks and started adding it to the background but this time I added them differently than before. Instead of blending them with a dabber I went ahead and put them on the mat and then added a little bit of water to each color. All you do then is just press your paper into the color and it creates a beautiful distressed background. You have to dry in between layers so that way the colors create a really cool distressed look. So I dried my first one which was the lightest color and then I went with the next one which is a more pinkish color to add to the background. Again I put it on my mat, I sprayed it a little bit and then I pressed it into the area where my toucan was. That way it would shade the inside of the stamped area. Again I dried in between the next layer and finally I went with the purple Distress Oxide ink and did the exact same thing. This time though I left the pink on the background because I knew I wanted to go back and forth between the two colors so all I did is just create a little bit of purple distressed look and dry it up and then go back with the pink color as well. That way I could really layer them together. Always have a wipe handy so you can use to wipe off any water excess and that way it really helps with creating those really neat distress stains. Finally I took an yellowy color which I had used at the beginning for the background and added a little bit of that yellow tone into my toucan. That way it had a few splatters of yellow color as well and it added so much to the background. I cut out the image out of the paper and placed it on my art journal page to see how it would look and I realized that I wanted a little bit more purple and pink in the background as well. 
So I removed the image and went ahead and added a little bit of that distressed look in the background. I took both the purple and the pink that I had used for the bird and did the same technique that I had used for creating the bird for my own background. This really made a big mess, but I don't mind messes. I sometimes find that they make it look better. If you want to avoid that, you could heat set the brown before. I forgot to do that, so that's why the brown kind of mixed with the other colors. However, it still looked really, really nice. And towards the end, I went back with the stencil and added a little bit more pattern to the background with the brown color. Once I found the right spot for my bird, I took some adhesive tape and just stuck it to the background. I just glued it normally using some of that tape. Then I took a brown marker. This is a Faber-Castell's Brick Brush Pen. It, this is a brown color and I just wanted to create a branch underneath my bird. After creating this branch, I really felt as if I had ruined the art journal page. It looked really weird to me. So I tried to salvage it by creating other things around it and just adding more pattern, like I said before. So it really helped to bring back that stencil and the same brown color that I had used before and just add a little bit of pattern right underneath the branches. That way it made it match the rest of the layout and it also blended it with the branches so it didn't stick out as much. So this brushed corduroy color really helped to blend everything in. I cut out a few hearts out of the leftover paper around the bird. These were cut freehand and I just glued them to the background. I put them as a one, two, three little line on the left hand side of the bird. I just thought it would balance the page a little bit more. Then I took a quote from the Tim Holtz word stickers and added it to my background. I cut each word as it had three words and I added each one of the words on top of one of the hearts. Then I took a black foodable marker and started adding some doodling everywhere. I started by creating a line going down the hearts, almost making it look like stitches. And then I outlined the hearts, the words, the bird, and just created a border. So I really like doodling all around. It really helped to bring everything together. So making marks and just creating some cohesive doodling to the page. I find it really important for me to create borders around my art journal pages. These can be done usually either with ink or with paint, or you can also use a marker like I'm doing right now. I find that it frames everything and gives it a really nice look. And I really like doing that. Some people don't frame them and that's okay. Every person has their preference, but I really love framing my artwork and creating kind of a frame around it, especially in the art journaling pages. So in this case, I'm just adding lines, but I could have done this with ink or with paint as well. I also ended up journaling along the branches and just wrote about how I felt at the moment and I felt that was really important even though it's illegible I know what it says and I'm happy writing something and filling in my feelings towards what I'm creating. Finally I felt like it was still missing some more doodling so I went around and added some markings in different areas and truthfully there was no logic to this. I knew I wanted to create some longer lines and shorter lines and kind of make it look distressed. So I just doodled in different areas of the art journal to create this and just balance the page. Finally, all I have to do is just pop the page back into my art journal and it's done. That way it's so quick and easy, but I was able to work with it on a flat surface. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. For more inspiration, subscribe to my channel and visit me on my website. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Bye!